So today's auction just takes us across the border, which used to be really close, but now that we move, not as close as it used to be. But we are in Angola, Indiana, and an estate sale auction. And boy, does she have some lovely furniture pieces. And of course, Chris loves the barista cabinets, but they always tend to go really high at auctions, but it's just so nice to share them with you. And look at this lovely, I've never seen one with a little desk in it. <gasps> Way cool. There's definitely some magnificent furniture here. Not furniture that I will tell you that we would paint and make over by any means. And as I've shared with you, that furniture kind of, you know, lost its smaller pieces. We're really not going to make the investment right now. Furniture has really almost halted in the selling part of the um, reselling business for us. And I just don't understand why people don't love this type of cabinet as much as I do. Look at that. That's their chunky. That's your chunky stuff you like. That one is? Yeah. Maybe. This is, Maybe is this it? No. Morning. Are you sure? It's the same sliders. It might be two pieces, honey. No, there's no way that fits on top. I mean, I think it would be tall, but it might be. There's another one right here. Yeah. Oh, that short one's cute. I like that one. That one's the, with the little desk. Yeah. Not quite as many as that other auction, though. Whew. Well, maybe as many as the other auction. Very seldom will take the large pieces because I resell windows and other wall decor. But I do like to pick up the smaller little artwork pieces like this. Okay, guys, let's dig in some boxes. I don't know what that is. One of the recent auctions we were at, they had these same type of planters. I don't know if they're haul or who makes them, but they go for some very good money if they're all intact. As I'm looking ahead at this auction, everything it was brought out in boxes. So when they just set it on the table on boxes, so you're, I'm going to have to try to dig, take my turn digging because lots of other people are digging. Lots of Roseville, lots of Hall, lots of Weller pieces. Um, yeah, so I just have to yeah try to see if I can get in and share with you what's in these boxes, what treasures are to be found. Well, hello, beautiful. If you know me, these are the pieces that I collect in the swung vase. <gasps> oh, we'll see if I get that. You just never know. So let's let's keep on digging. Try to act like you're not excited about a piece so other people see you excited about a piece. <laughs> I, I like, I don't even know if they pay attention, but yes. Awesome. And lots of little glowy pieces in here. Lots of, there's lots of glassware. I did not Notice that when we saw this on auction zip, but yeah, I love, I don't know, y'all, are you diggers? Do you love just digging and seeing what treasures are in all these boxes? So this is a box full of paperweights that, they, you know, they could, you know, I thought the last, one of the last auctions we went to were, was kind of dirty, but, eh, you know. Though this part of the fair I never was involved in, but they do actually have like an adult open class. So this lady must have taken her antiques in and have them judge. <laughs> so that, yeah, so I don't know how you judge an antique, but I do remember that section of a barn as my kids did many, many years at the 4-H fair. How cute are those? Y'all know that I like littles, but it's hard to remember littles like this in an individual box.
So would you consider this a flower duck or would it have been like a pencil holder? I thought this box was really neat and I did go to 50 when I was bidding on it, but then I stopped. You know, you have to see the resell unless you're keeping it for yourself. I always see fairy lights, but then again, I always get outbid on the fairy lights. So it's nice to look at them. Well, you know, I was gonna I was gonna come out and play on these uh, spice <laughs> jars. It was a beautiful full set with the holder, but yeah, I didn't even get into the bid because it was over what I was willing to pay. Yep, that's just how it goes at auctions. Just because you want something, um, you know, in your head what you're willing to pay or the value if you're a reseller. It's just how it goes. So you all know I wanted to bid on this basket just for this oh, broken down sugar bucket. Oh my, and I didn't even know if all the pieces were going to be there, but I knew that Chris would love putting it back together, but that had some cast iron matchbook holders in it. So yeah, that probably wasn't going to happen. Like I said, I didn't even know if all the pieces were in that box. And since I am not an expert, I didn't know if this was Blanco. The bottom kind of reminded me of art glass, but oh, look at that orange. Do you know the only time I'm ever going to get a ceramic tree is if it is tucked and nobody actually finds it, like the one in the basement, because this went for like 85, 90. I'm not even, I couldn't even remember. I was like, really? <laughs> and they were resellers. It is so sad. The first time I looked at this box, I saw the little bendy elf. Um, and then when they went to auction, the Bendy Elf wasn't there anymore. I hate that people are dishonest and that move things or I'd hate to think that they pocketed things. But yeah, I don't remember seeing it at the bidding time. And I feel as if I have quite the collection in my booth right now of swung vases. So I'm not even going to come out and play on those either. Over the years, she must have taken quite a few pieces because there was a quite a few of the tags from showing them at fair. There were a few first place ones and then a lot of participation, which I, doesn't mean any. I mean, it doesn't really mean anything because you don't know if it was which antique it was because they weren't necessarily on the item itself. They were just kind of laying in the box. So I, I was curious, though. Talk about creepy, and I know creepy is in for certain people right now, and that's definitely, definitely creepy. Never seen one of these pieces in the wild. I know that they go for very good money. Yes, it was a Saturday auction. That is just what we do. Oh my goodness. Um, lots of boxes, lots of boxes that you needed to dig through. And th we've never been to this auctioneer's auctions before. And instead of selling box lots, they pick every item out of the box. Oh my Lord. Oh my Lord. So instead of getting really good deals in box lots, people were paying up for individual items and then what was left over anyway, y'all. So I did get a few things at today's auction, but we didn't stay. We ended up, I st was staying for one item that I wanted, but it was taking forever. Um, this auction, you know, it was just one of those that I didn't really see the resell value in. Um, when, so they had two separate auctioneers. If you go to auctions, sometimes there's multiple auctioneers. So the stuff that I did end up getting was because the one auctioneer was selling the beautiful furniture at first. So 
it's hard to be at two places at once or and if you're only one person it's impossible so that was really the only reason that i got some stuff so yeah. So Chris and I quickly realized that, you know what, we're in Angola, Indiana, and there are some cool antique stores down there. So we'd rather go down and take our chances and tour them and see if there's any treasures we can find at the antique store. Never underestimate shopping at an antique store. That is true. So if you are new to the channel, my name is Yvonne, and along with my husband, Chris, we love to go hunting for secondhand finds. And a lot of Saturdays we do auctions. So at the end of the auction, when I show you a little bit what's out there, I will show you the haul of what I bring home. I am a reseller. I am a flipper. That means I also paint items, not only reselling. I have three booths at a local antique mall along with an eBay store. So if you're all interested, um, please check that out below. But yeah, let me share with the treasures that I got. And there wasn't a lot, but you know, sometimes, you know, you have to be picky. You have to really like, okay, this is what the bottom dollar I'll pay for this item. Or I ended up having to buy that box. So what item do, do what items in that box do I see any value? I don't know. <laughs> you know, you just, you have to guess right at that time. So let me share the haul with you. So the first thing that I bought today was this beautiful older basket. Look at those nails. Now it is missing one of the legs, the little feeties, but I don't think that's a big deal. I'm pretty sure that Chris, um, with his woodworking skills <laughs> can pop this one off, maybe reproduce that and make two. Cause I think the feet are what make the little basket. I love that it's older. I love making little vignettes in them, putting little things together for you all. It's just, it's got beautiful, I mean, just, it's a beautiful basket. And I know people are probably just kind of looking at me like it's broken. Well, it's not that broken. I mean, really you could take both feet off if you wanted, you know, well, the one that's left, but it's, I think it's a pretty cool piece. So the next was a pick, like they kept throwing all these stuff in together and I'm like, no, I don't want it all. I just like, you know, clear glass, unless it's Waterford Crystal is really hard to sell. But I did see these crockery bowls. There was a stack of crockery bowls. Now this is probably, I think maybe yellowware, but look at that crack. So I do have another piece of yellowware that I have in my stash. You can turn it around. Um, cracked is hard to sell, but it's, it's old. It's old and so I will put that probably in my decor. I definitely am not gonna let it go to a landfill. And then there were these cool crockery USA five inch little bowls, way cool. I am a sucker for crockery dough bowls. I am just a sucker for them. So I thought, I, and minis, oh my gosh, minis are so cute. So in the box of those, there was also this cute little pitcher and it's, it's actually a McCoy, but McCoy, it's a McCoy. Look at that beautiful scene on there. So I did grab that up to save it. And then this other little piece is a leptin, and it's a little mushroom basket. Um, I believe this one is, does have a chip on it here. Um, but other than that, it's not, it says 1970. So it's 50 years old, y'all. <laughs> I can do math fast, it's 50 years old. You know, those mushrooms are, you know, they're kind of questionable if they're in, if they're out, I don't really know. I don't really know. It's just if that piece interests that person. And then the last little piece was another McCoy piece, which was these bunnies. Um, probably not their best paint job, but made to look aged and old. Um, honest, you know, I'm honest with you, but it's bunnies, it's bunnies. And it looks like it was a souvenir piece, but I think I'll probably try to wash that off. Lake City, Michigan. Yeah, I mean, because um, there is a, crack a little crack right there but it is a mccoy piece 89 cents can you imagine buying something for 89 cents but like i said cute bunnies cute bunny cute little painted of the pink on the ear it's a good box it was a good box because i got two more little crockeries so a double double salt glazed and another little brown one these are just nice you know these are nice little trinket catchers they're nice um 
like I put my candles in them. You can get the right size candle that fits in them and it kind of makes your candle a little bit more decorative. And the last thing that I thought, I, I, it was this Jungle Book old tin. I don't know, 39 cents. It was 39 cents. So you know that it's old. It's just a cool, cool, cute tin, just a cute tin. It needs a good bath. It needs a good bath, but that's just how auctions go. So I thought that, I thought that was pretty cool. Um, oh, one more thing that was in there. I, I said it was a good box. Was this little wall pocket. Look, at it's a little wall pocket hook. Is that not Artist Barn, Fillmore, California? So... And I was going to buy a few more wall pockets, but they were there again. I mean, I don't know. I don't think everybody like the Fenton auction that we were at um, were collectors. I really do think a lot of these people paying. That's hard because you pay up like that. And that means then your prices in your retail booth are you're going to be paying up for. But I guess it all depends on your area. We are still, I still consider little Allen where our booths are, small town America. So we got to be reasonable here, y'all. So, um, yeah, way cool. That piece is way cool. It's not chipped. It's dirty, but it's not chipped. I just thought that artist barn, the artist barn, I thought that was neat. You know, to each of their own if they want to pay up for stuff. That's all I have to say. And then my, la my next little thing was a little glass of skeleton keys. These are hard to come by. Um, the last, I, I, the last auction I went to, um, which was that Fenton one, they went for $65. So I paid $10. I can't always remember what I paid, but I paid $10 for these. But I like to use them in my vignette. So, you know, like, so that makes them a couple bucks a piece. But yeah, I mean, it was like a box like this for $65, a little container. I'm like, oh, yeah, see what I mean? I'm like, okay, well. Each of them. Now, Chris did pick up this yummy. We haven't had a butter churn um, in a while, and I really do like to keep one in our booths if we can. So this is nice. It's got the raised writing on um, the front. I think, I don't remember how much, gosh, I, anyway, it's not, nice. they're nice to have. They do sell, they're not quick sells. They do sell, and they do, uh, usually about $95, so if you can do anything half that, um, you know, doubling your money back. And I know a lot of people are like, oh, you need to three times your money. Just do what you're comfortable with, folks. Just do what you're comfortable with. We like to shop. We like to buy. We like to go to all these places, but we have to sell it also. So, and I always say, and I always say, I don't like to dust in my booth. I don't want to dust. <laughs> I want to sell it, bring something else in, just does the shelves. So next up, I spied, oh, look at these color thermoses. Oh my gosh, I just absolutely, we're in the season right now. We're going right into that season. So this one is just yummy. That one is just that oh, harvest orange color is just amazing. Oh my gosh, a lot of people use these as decor and these are perfect mid-century modern right now colors for the fall season. I picked up, you know, I'm a sucker for boxes because I like to make boxes over for y'all. Now this looks like it was probably a cigar, cigar box maybe, that it's missing its lid, but that's character. And it had a whole bunch of yummies in it. Not great yummies. It did have this horse, which I do think is cool. The horse is plastic. It had a little jeweler's eye. It had these, which I think are really neat because you could put wire in them and, um, you know, make little picture um, displays. This is pretty neat. I don't know what this stands for, but it does say 1947 to 1976. So if you all know what that stands for, I don't know. I love little, you know, like the cow tags or anything like that. The screen pins tacks i think are cool i like the spring i know that seems weird so there are odds odds and ends in here that are you know interesting enough interesting enough that i know some people probably look at me when i'm buying stuff but you have to see past look at that little knob look at that pole look at that pole in another lot 
a little box, there was this beautiful white, I almost called it yellow, white horse and no chips or cracks. Oh my gosh, I am a sucker for white, y'all. I am a sucker for white. So there was that horse and then this little horse that went along with it. Um, I don't know, that's kind of sloppy, so I can't tell what it says. The other horse doesn't have anything on it. Um, this little Scotty dog, <laughs> this little Scotty dog came with it, and it's there's no marking on this one either. But in the grouping, there was a pie bird. So these are always fun to get your hands on. I don't get my hands on them very often at all. I think one. I've had one in my hands to resell. <laughs> so this is just a little bit bigger one. If you don't know what a pie bird is, a lot of people do collect them just to collect them, but like you sit it in the middle of your pie and it allows that steam so that your pie crust isn't soggy, but they are very, they're very collectible. I, you know, I'm a sucker for horses too. So here was this, I don't know, um, I can't say that it's brass because it's not heavy. You can tell that it's hollow. I love the aged patina on this. Love it. Um, it's just, it's a beautiful, I love that he has um, like a little chain rain. I love the patina that you can tell that it's old and aged from the head to the tail. It's just a, it's just a cool piece. If I had a bookshelf or an Oprah shelving, I would definitely be keeping this piece for myself because, oh my gosh, he is, he is gorgeous, gorgeous. So I know when I bought these two, this pair, everybody's like, you know, yeah, sometimes you have to buy the odd things. Now, this little deer is just as cute as could be, a little brass deer, um, probably purchased with the velvet on it. Um, but it wasn't him that they thought was weird. They thought the little <laughs> sitting one was a little bit on the odd, eh, you know, but their antlers are attached. They're cool pieces. They're vintage. I love the patina aged on these brass pieces. These are brass. Um, I just think they're cool. I, I, I like the oddity of how he's, how he's sitting, how he's sitting. Yes, it's, it's weird, but who cares? Who cares? Nope, I've never seen a, a deer sit, sit that way, but who am I to judge? Very, a very cool pair, especially coming into like the holiday season or if you just, I mean, I guess you could take the red off if you want. I probably, I wouldn't do it as a reseller. I'd let somebody else make that choice. So a few auctions before this, we went to an auction that had, if she didn't have a hundred pieces of artwork, and they were basically giving it away, $10 and under. This auction, <laughs> it was hard to touch the artwork. It was like 75 to $100, and it was the same um, artist-signed paintings, the same, actually same, some of it was the same artist. Um, so I kind of was, yeah, so I did, I did get a couple pieces, so I'll share them with you. No, I did not pay, pay those prices for them. So first off, I just think simple hand-painted signed floral is just beautiful. I think the frame is just nice and simple. The back shows the age. It must have been one that you um, could have sat down, you know, like stood up also, but now it's just a, a hanger. I, I think it's just, I like that frame. Um, it's just beautiful. I, it's a beautiful, and that pop of yellow is just amazing. Um, it needs dusted. It needs dusted, and then those colors will really show. Here was another signed piece, which I have to get my jeweler's eye to read those signatures. Just another nice framed, simple, beautiful floral, smaller, smaller. I usually go for the smaller pieces only because one, if somebody wants to buy them, they're shippable. And two, I have little cubbies in my booth, like little ne nesting boxes that Chris made. And this size fits in them because I do a lot of repurposing windows and making my own wall decor that I try to keep it to smaller pieces if I can. And then I'm a sucker for animals. It's a squirrel. <laughs> Look at him, is he not? 
Oh, not for, oh, it wasn't for resale. He's not for resale. I don't know why he's not for resale because I bought him. <laughs> so Powell, I've actually seen that signature before, but just a cute, cute little squirrel. Fits right into the little fall season or if you're, you know, you're a critter lover like I am. And then my last artwork. So my last artwork, the chippy frame got me. The chippy frame and I just think it's beautiful. Oh, is that not? Look at that chippy frame. Chippiness, chippiness. Older piece, older piece. Oh, just a beautiful, simple, just simple. It's just simple and beautiful. So just a nice, simple, um, I'm assuming like it's a print, but uh, it's thicker in there. You can, uh, it's hard to tell, but you can see that it's, it's thicker. So it's just not a piece of paper. It's on, on a, on a cardboard piece, but yeah, I just, I just thought it was very simple and I waited too long. I kept trying to wait for the prices to go down and then things that I wanted were, you know, somebody took home. So I, I'm like, ah, oh, okay. It's hard to wait. It's hard to play that waiting game because you want to get a good price. Um, you know, because you, as a reseller, you're supposed to buy low, sell high. You know, yeah, I suck at that. <laughs> I do. I know. I know that I suck at that. Well, I just, I like to shop. I don't know. But yeah, so a lot of times I'm like, oh, I wanted that one. I wanted, you know, but yeah, <laughs> there, there's that. So my last auction piece. And then we ended up leaving at something I wanted. It was something I wanted and I collect. So, and I had to fight a little bit for, because there again, there again, I don't see them a lot, even though, even though the Fenton auction, I got one um, and paid way less, but Fenton have nail a swung pitcher. <gasps> goes in my collection. I think I have one almost exactly like this. Um, but yeah, I paid up a little bit. I don't remember where the end bid was. I just kept my hand up because I collect it. So I'll pay up for that because I'm collecting it. I don't see that. It's funny that two weeks, two weeks, Fenton, Fenton. Yeah, the Fenton would have been two weeks um, in a row. I came across one, but you know, I'm going to, I'm going to try to snag them up. I don't know how, how many more my shelf can um, take, but, I, and it's dirty. It's dirty. I thought we'd been to the dirtiest auction, but I guess, I guess not. <laughs> it proved me wrong. At least I can touch that butter churn. The other one at that Sturgis auction was, whoo, was really dirty. So that is what we got at the auction today. Yeah, sometimes you just have to make the decision that I don't see enough reselling in it. It's taking forever because they're picking out of the box. And hey, it's the auctioneer is there to make money for the family. And I get that. I totally, totally get that. So piecing it is always going to make you more money than probably boxing. I don't, I don't, I'm not an expert. But so let me know if you enjoyed today's touring a little bit. I didn't really dig into the boxes because they were, I mean, I did and I didn't. And, you know, sometimes you just have to spy a box. And yeah, there were some goodies. <laughs> there were some goodies. I would have loved that relish, but we had left at that time. And I knew some of the other resellers that were there. I know that I, I'm never going to outbid them and they're going to probably get those pieces. And then the crawling baby, that was weird. That was weird and the pig with the eyelashes. And I really wanted that broken sugar bucket, but there was, they sold that all as a lot. That one they sold as a lot. They didn't give you a choice to pick. And it had cast iron matchbook holders. So that one like over a hundred dollars. So I, and I didn't know that lady that bought it or I might've asked if we could have bought the broken sugar bucket off of it because you know, we love a good project piece, but oh well, life happens, it's okay. So. I'll show you the, what we got at the antique stores in another haul. Finish this up. I so appreciate you all for watching. I hope you enjoy, you know, I know the auction hall, everybody wants to see decor and makeovers and house improvements, but you know, this is how we make our living is buying and reselling. Um, yeah. So, and 
Chris gets to go. You know, we both enjoy doing that. So I thank you all that, you know, are support us by watching these types of videos. We totally appreciate it. We love you all. We will see you next time and you can see what we're up to. Bye.